Hi, my name is George Garcia. Welcome to Fusion Electronics. In this video, we're going to be going over the Design Rules Editor. So let's begin by clicking on the Design Rules icon. Now you'll notice that the Design Rules Editor is split up into two main sections. You have General Rules and you have Custom Rules. Now if you have an Eagle background, what you find in the General Rules corresponds to the tabs that we're taking out of design preferences. So if you were used to the old DRC dialog and you noticed that design preferences was missing a few tabs, this is where they are now. All of the rules are now located in one place in the design rules editor. Now you're going to notice that we can now enable and disable some rules, something that was not possible previously. Now, if you notice, the first set of general rules are all clearance rules. If you click on any rule, it's going to give you an image, letting you know what that rule represents. It's going to give you a description, and then it's going to give you the parameters of the rule. Now, one thing that's also new here is you're going to notice that you can define a minimum and a preferred value. In certain applications, it's beneficial to be able to define a preferred value that's larger than the minimum so that when routing, you can maintain a certain preferred width, etc. If, however, you prefer to just deal with one value, that's what you're accustomed, that's what you've seen before, then all you have to do is set minimum and preferred to be the same value. Now, I also want to highlight that if you're coming from Eagle, everything that the DRC in Eagle was capable of is here and more. So you're going to notice, for example, this copper restrict clearance rule. Previously, whenever you applied a restrict area, there was not a rule to define it. Simply, if there was a collision, if, for example, you had a top restrict, if copper on the top touched it, that was a rule violation. And as you can see, by default, it's set to that. You have minimum and preferred both set to zero. So if there's a collision, then you have a violation. But you have more control because now you can define a buffer around the restrict area. So you can say, well, you can only get so close as three mils to the clearance area, to the, to the restrict area, something that wasn't possible before. Another rule that's super useful is this unconnected line rule. Now, what does this rule do? Well, if you've been working in Fusion for a while, you may have imported a board outline through DXF. And sometimes when we do this, the outline isn't perfectly closed. There's a really small gap that you can't even visually tell where it's at. But that gap, or that kink, causes Fusion to not be able to detect the board shape. Well, this rule now detects that. So it'll show you where the gap is and you can fix it. So it's going to save a lot of time, especially when importing DXF outlines or just trying to make perfectly closed contours. You'll notice that we also have here match signal links rules. So if you, in previous uh, versions of Fusion or even in Eagle, you'll know that this was in the miscellaneous tab of the DRC. Well, now it's become first class. It's in general rules. And it allows you to define a global tolerance for your differential pairs. So this is the maximum allowable length difference and a global gap factor. So gap factor is multiplied times the clearance to define how wide the coils in a meander can be. Um, by default, this value is set to two and a half. However, you can set it to as low as one. If you set it to one, then the clearance is what's determining the gap the the coil width. So all of this is already things that you're familiar with if you're coming from an eagle background. The general rules plus the design preferences, define the manufacturing constraints of the board. You want to use design preferences and the general rules to define the bare minimums of your design, below which the manufacturer cannot produce your board. And you'll get this information from the board manufacturer's website, or they may give it to you in a specification sheet. Whatever the source, the general rules and the design preferences are that ground floor that define your manufacturing constraints in the PCB. Now, custom rules is where things get very interesting. Now, as we mentioned before, the net class has changed. Now there's no rules for the net classes. 
And honestly, if you think about it, previously in Fusion and in Eagle, the only way to have rules different from the default, you know, from the global minimums, was through net classes. It was the only available scope. If you wanted certain nets to be thicker, to be to have a greater clearance, etc., the only way you could do that was to make those nets part of a net class and then define special rules for that net class. If we go into custom rules, what you're going to see is that now you're able to define rules, yes, based on a net class, but on many more scopes than what was previously possible. So the functionality of the design rule system within Fusion has grown leaps and bounds over what was available before. Before, if you wanted something different, the only way to achieve it was through net classes. But now, you can actually scope on many different parameters. And there's a lot more flexibility in this DRC engine. So, let's go through a simple example. We're actually going to do another video where we go through several more practical examples, more involved examples, adjusting the general rules, design preferences, and creating custom rules. But for this video, I just want to show you how the custom rule setup works. So if you notice, I already have some copper width rules. Now, if you're importing a legacy design into Fusion that has net classes, these will be processed and turned into custom rules automatically. And if you go into copper width, you're going to see that I have that already over here with this copper width value. And the way you can tell this, it says in net class equals default. So if you haven't created any, but you see that you have some rules, they're probably coming from net classes that you defined in the design originally, either in an older version of Fusion or even an Eagle. So you'll notice I have another rule here defined, which is called ground width. Let's go ahead and make one more rule. So I'm going to click add. And again, this is a copper width rule. So you can have as many rules as you want of these different types. The most commonly used rules are probably going to be widths and clearances. Those are probably going to be the most common. But just as a simple example, let's go with this one, a copper width rule. Okay, now you can name your rule whatever you want. So I'm going to call this I read baseline top special. Okay, this name is completely arbitrary. As you saw, we have the same enable disable controls and we have parameters. So this is all things we've seen before. For parameters, I'm going to really exaggerate it so it becomes very obvious. You'll notice minimum and preferred are value checked. So preferred will automatically become the minimum if you type it in and you can't have a preferred value that's less than minimum. So the error checking will make sure that you don't enter some combination of values that isn't allowed. Scope is where things get interesting. Scope defines where the rule applies. So as I mentioned previously, the only thing you could do was in net classes. Now we can do much more. So for this one, I'm going to say in signal. So notice all the different things that we can scope by. We can check pads, we can check text, we can check attributes, we can obviously do net classes, we can do inside a specific component on specific layers. So for this one, we'll keep it simple. In signal, IR, uh, I read baseline. Okay, it's equal. We can do different things, equal and not equal. You can define whatever net you want to use. Okay, all of your designs nets show up here. Okay, and now we can add an additional condition. So I'm going to say is on signal layer equals top. Okay, and all my layers are here, top and bottom. So what can we do? So what we want to do here, or what we want to understand is that these are and, these, these conditions are anded together. So what we are saying is that this rule is going to apply to the I read baseline signal only, and only when it's on the top. So if that signal crosses layers, this rule only applies to the top portion. All right? Makes sense. So let's say, okay, we want this rule to run. And we're going to go over here and we're going to notice something interesting. 
Okay. You notice there's the iRed baseline. Now if I click it, this is 12 mils. However, we don't have anything flagging. So what's going on? What's going on with this? Why isn't the error flagged? Well, let's go back to the rules editor. And let's see something interesting. If we go here into copper width, you're going to notice that there is a priority, which is something that wasn't available before. Okay, rules in every category have priority. And the order in which you set them up controls that priority. So right now, before anything else gets flagged, this ground width runs. Then this copper width runs. And then this I read baseline top special. What's happening here, and the reason the error isn't flagged, is that this condition is met. So, because it has higher priority than I read baseline top special, it overrides this lower priority rule. Because the I read baseline signal shows up in both rules. So, you have two rules that can collect or attack or maybe attack is not the right term, that can affect the same object. Which of the two rules applies? Which one wins? Guess what? The one that has higher priority. So we have to make sure when we define rules that we do so in such a way that we are maintaining the correct priority. So what's the rule of thumb here? The more specific the rule is, the higher on the priority it should be. Okay? So this ground width rule, no problem. It's a ground signal. Top, very specific, will only grab the ground objects. This uh, I read baseline top special only applies to one signal on the top object, very specific. But this copper width one is the most generic of the three rules. Therefore, it should be lower priority. Okay? And now when we do this, you see the error gets flagged. Okay, so this is a very important concept to be aware of in the, in the design rules mechanism. Priority is extremely important. And the rule of thumb, again, it's very easy to keep track of. The more specific the rule, the higher the priority it should have. So all your specific rules, you want them near the top. The more generic rules, you want them further down. Okay, if an object can be classified under more than one rule, the higher priority of the rules will win. So this is just a brief introduction to the rules editor. In the following video, we're going to go into the design preferences editor. And then after that, we're going to go into some examples. Okay, and those examples will be real world applications, things that we normally are looking to do in PCB layout. So keep an eye out for those videos. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.